Hey guys, welcome back to another Destiny 2 video. Today's video is a sort of part two from the Volatile Darkness video I just put out. And if the last was focused on pure damage and ad clear, this is survivability to an unreal level. This build is definitely one of my favorites and will have a permanent addition to my inventory ready builds. And while we still have some weapons and modifiers coming to us later in the season, this build is already too insane not to showcase. Before we begin, if you like what you see in the video, be sure to like and subscribe so you don't miss any Destiny 2 content. Thank you in advance. Starting off, we are on Void 3.0, and I'm rocking Bubble Titan in order for survivability and the instant grenade regen on cast, although you can totally use Sentinel if you prefer. We're rocking the Sentinel Throw Melee Charge, which gives us over shields on hit, as well as suppressor grenades to suppress enemies on detonation. For our subclass aspects, we're rocking Bastion, which essentially when we cast our barricade, it creates an overshield-like area of effect for us and our allies, and having our allies stand behind it extends the overall duration of that barricade. We're also rocking Offensive Bulwark, and essentially what this does is whenever you cast your Ward of Dawn, your grenade recharges much faster and you've increased melee range and damage. For Fragments, I'm using Echo Provision, which grants us melee energy on grenade damage, Echo of Exchange, which grants melee final blows grenade energy, and Echo of Persistence, which increases duration of our overshield effect. Just a quick note as well, for anyone who's planning on rocking this build, after the completion of the Day 1 raid for Witch Queen, I would highly suggest swapping Echo of Exchange or Echo of Provision for Echo of Starvation, and essentially picking up an Orb of Power will grant us Devour on Titan. As far as I know, this should have no problem stacking with Overshield, as well as also working with Echo of Persistence, and this is what is going to make this build absolutely insane, and even combining it with the Exotic Glaive potentially can make it even stronger with the addition of the Mini Bubble. This is why I think this build is not even close to its maximum potential. When that raid is first completed, swap out either Echo of Provision or Echo of Exchange in order for Echo of Starvation, and we could potentially be rocking Overshields and Devour at the exact same time, which is absolutely insane. Onto our mods for the build. Starting off on our helmet, we're rocking Melee Wellmaker, which allows our melee kills to gen Void Orbs on kill when we used our Charge Melee, Kinetic Siphon, which grants Orbs of Power Drops on Rapid Kinetic Weapon Kills, and Harmonic Siphon, which on Rapid Weapon Kills with a affinity matching our subclass, grants Orbs of Power Drops as well. I'm also rocking a Discipline mod, and throughout this video you'll see that I'm rocking Discipline, Strength, and Resilience mods. Onto our gauntlets, we're using Elemental Armaments, which allows our weapons to spawn Elemental Wells matching their affinity. In this case, we're going for Void. And I'm also using two Momentum Transfer mods, which enable reduced cooldown on our melee from causing damage with our grenade. Onto our chest piece and our exotic today is Heart of Inmost Light, which, really quickly breaking down the exotic, Heart of Inmost Light functions with empowering stacks, which in short, when you use an ability, your other abilities become more potent. Such an example is you have stronger grenades and melee charges when you use your barricade. And whenever you use your other charges, your barricade becomes stronger. And by the way, this also stacks with Bastion. And overall, their cooldowns are dramatically reduced upon using an ability. We're also rocking Heavy Handed, which will consume a stack of charge with light whenever we use our melee ability and grant us back 50% of our melee charge at the cost of one stack of charge with light. In addition, I'm also using an arc resist to also proc heavy handed second ability, which is when we're surrounded, our sidearm, fusion rifle, shotgun, or submachine gun is filled from reserves upon defeating a combatant, and you can always use an additional resist mod as well if you wanted to, or just simply bypass the secondary effect for heavy handed and rock a reserve for instance. Next onto our boots, we have Well of Tenacity, which has been insanely buffed up to 50% damage resistance for 5 seconds upon picking up a Void Well. Well of Tenacity's damage resistance combined with our Overshield makes us nigh unkillable outside of high-end content and is insanely potent in all aspects of PvE. However, if you don't have Well of Tenacity, Firepower is another great mod that grants grenade energy back like Heavy Handed does, although it's only about 20% instead of 50. I'm also using Glaive Scavenger, which is a one-cost seasonal mod, and Absolution, which grants us reduced ability cooldown when we pick up an Orb of Power. Onto our Mark, I'm rocking Elemental Charge, which grants us two stacks of charge with light when we pick up a Void Well, enabling our near-constant melee charges, which gen us overshields. I'm also rocking Suppressive Glaive, which suppresses combatants on hit with our Glaive, as well as Energy Vampirism, which gives us energy back on our least charged ability upon suppressing an enemy. Of course, in combination with not only our abilities, but also suppressing Glaive, this is going to be proc'd extremely often. And of course, I'm also using Overload Grenades just because, you know, if there's ever a champion, why not use your grenade to also stun them? In short, all of these essentially enable a near constant use of abilities, and as you can see from the background gameplay that I'm showing, we're not only suppressing enemies and giving us nearly infinite overshields, but we're absolutely just spamming all of our abilities, which benefit us and our fire team. 
As far as weapons to pair with this, I cannot recommend enough Traveler's Chosen, which grants us stacks of Gathering Light from Combatant Kill. This as a base improves the reload handling and target acquisition of this weapon, but we can also consume these stacks to grant us back ability energy. And just as a quick note, at times 10 stacks, it can basically give us back all of our abilities. Plus it also comes with Osmosis with its Catalyst, enabling this to become a Void Weapon potentially, which also in turn benefits from Elemental Armaments, as well as our Orbit Power Mods on our Helm. Just a quick note as well, this also received the 40% Kinetic Exotic bonus to minor enemies at the start of Witch Queen, which, when you're actually combining all of this, makes it an ad clear monster. And like I said with Will of Tenacity, if you don't have that and just want to amp up this thing's damage, you can also rock Font of Might, which is another one-cost seasonal mod, and make this absolutely insane with ad clear. In addition, I'm using the Enigma Glaive, which can take advantage of a few of our mods, specifically with Suppressing Glaive, which grants us ability energy on suppressing hits. For our heavy, I'm using the same corrective measure with Adrenaline Junkie and Demolitionist, which was featured in the last video, and simply put, it's because it's absolutely insane, so if you can roll for this in Vault of Glass, it is incredibly worth it. I would like to point out that other weapons that also suppress and would also work really well with this build are notably Tractor Cannon and Two-Tailed Fox, and the soon-to-drop Exotic Titan Glaive that can spawn mini bubbles would also work incredibly well with this, along with legendaries that have Swashbuckler or Demolitionist on it. In addition, some new legendary weapons can roll with the Land Tank perk, which grants bonus damage resistance and resilience upon killing combatants, which can make us even tankier if you want to go all out on survivability, and yes, this stacks with Overshield and with Well of Tenacity for my testing. Keep in mind, it is PBE testing, so I don't really have exact numbers for you, but it is somewhat noticeable whenever you don't have the other two proc'd. But that's really all there is to it, guys. It's a relatively simple build, but as you can see from the background gameplay, it is incredibly potent. This build is literally constant ability spam and nearly infant overshields for us and our fire team. With our last build being an incredible offensive build with Void 3.0, this is the unbeatable defense, turning us effectively unkillable outside of high-end content. This is definitely a favorite build of mine and an overall great display of the variety and potency of Void 3.0. If you have the time, I definitely recommend you guys give this build a try, and trust me, you won't regret it. Thanks for watching again, and stay tuned for more build guides on this channel, and let me know what you'd like to see in the comments. If you liked the video, be sure to subscribe for more Destiny 2 content, and I'll let the gameplay play out for you as we end the video. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time.